So what does it feel like to lead the future of biotech innovation? How can psychedelics be harnessed to revolutionize women's health and well-being? Today, I am thrilled to welcome Ashley Walsh, who is the founder and CEO of Inner State, a groundbreaking preclinical biotech company that specializes in psychedelic producing fungi for drug discovery. So Ashley's visionary work is really redefining the future of mental and physical health for women through cutting edge research and innovation. Thank you so much for being here, Ashley. Really excited to talk to you. Me too. Me too. So welcome to this new episode of the Microdose Diet. I'm your host, Peggy Van de Plash, and this podcast is all about getting more out of your life. I specialize in psychedelic-powered personal and professional development. I wrote the book, More, The Microdose Diet. You can see it behind me if you're uh, watching the video. And every week, I bring on guests like Ashley to share their wisdom and strategies for enhancing your life and career. So, Ashley, thank you again for joining me today. So, let's get in right away. So, tell us more about Inner State and how your team is driving innovation in psychedelic biotech focused on women's health. Yes, uh, just a little story in terms of, you know, obviously, Peggy, you and I share very similarities in terms of focusing on women, the microdosing and the effects it has for increasing our health, our vigor. And that's really where this started was I, three years ago, I had founded another company with my father, a Mescal company, and we were really at this pivot stage. And I had a choice of extending into the next growth phase there. But in that moment, I started witnessing something really amazing with my community as I had all these women microdosing and they were microdosing for so many different reasons, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. loss of pregnancy to weaning to a whole host of other things. And I mean, like profound changes, like this is life changing. Oh my gosh, so much better. And obviously what we're reading in the press at that time was really focused on the synthetic psilocybin for depression. (laughs) Like this is great. It's changing hearts and minds. We all knew here we are on a frontier of psychedelics. And I thought, you know, I had two really young kids at that time, a single mom. And I said, this is the power of women, right? Like we need to find things that are empowering their health, their mental health, their physical health. And I'm witnessing it right here in front of me. And if I don't do this, then I'm not really contributing to the things that I believe in. And so at that point, it was really like, okay, I'm going to jump out on my own. I'm going to found interstate. And it was really Mm -hmm. about the term interstate was about finding the self, yourself within and trusting that person. And that's really, you know, what I believe psychedelics and microdosing do is help Mm -hmm. you to understand yourself better, to understand your health and take it into your own hands. And so- the thing that I saw that wasn't quite happening at the time, and there's certain people doing it currently, and I'm, you know, it's so exciting to see the whole mushroom. You know, obviously Paul Stamets has always been out there promoting this. Yeah. There's, you know, on the the university side, actually starting a grow where you could grow and research whole mushrooms. That was mm. really the thought process was like, look, cannabis has done this so well. They've looked at strain specific health and uh, healing therapeutics. We need to do this more with mushrooms. I mean, mm-hmm. mycology is such a vast, crazy yeah. um, sector. I mean, we really are at the tip of the iceberg. There's some incredible books that when you read them, um, I, I, Merlin Sheldrake, he has this incredible book that when you listen to it, you're like, it's the future. I mean, it was mm-hmm. the past, but it's also the future <laughs> of what holds these molecular gold mine of novel molecules, things like what we look at with cannabis that each one of those different molecules from CBD to CBDV, all of them have different healing qualities, finding out more about that. And then looking at very strain specific healing and therapeutics in the way that, you know, different types of cannabis are looking at the different strains and genuses of mushrooms to say, how does this relate to say a serotonin assay? How does this relate to hormone assay for us specifically? That's really where we're looking at the next phase of our research is taking 15 to 16 strains of psilocybin producing mushrooms 
and looking at hormone assays. How are these interacting with estrogen receptors? How are they, you know, uh, mm -hmm. reacting to breast cancer, anti-cancer mechanisms, and then also looking at serotonin and then understanding how each one of these work better and how do they work together to really help move forward and advance some of the therapeutics around women's health mm -hmm. so that we can start looking at, maybe we can start shifting federal conversations around it. We're yeah. currently DEA approved. So we're doing this all federally. Can we start shifting the conversations with the FDA? Can we start changing the, mm -hmm. the rescheduling of the drugs so that we can reach yes. better? Mm -hmm. So all of that kind of falls under really what my goal was with starting interstate is let's mm -hmm. change policy forms around this. Let's look at a much more individualized way to look at mushrooms in the way cannabis did. Yeah. And, and, and thank you for really giving that um, deep context really helpful because I'm sure everyone who's listening is at a different level of understanding. So that, that's very helpful. So, so how do you see psychedelic producing fungi reshaping really, you know, this future of um, women's wellness? What are the, some of the key discoveries you're, you're excited about right now? Well, I definitely, I think what we all see with psychedelics and fungi is that maybe we're leaning towards nor more natural products. So mm. for me, it's like, how can we lessen the burden of the things that we're ingesting? How can we create more natural, easier, ingestible medicine, therapeutics, so that we're not having the reactions that we might with certain pharmaceutical injections? Yeah medicines, et cetera. So for me, the natural concept around this was really what was motivating me yeah. along with empowering a mental state, understanding, can we look at this holistically also? Are there things that can help estrogen flow as well as be anti-inflammatory? Exactly. All these things. So you know yeah. what, this is what you preach as well. Yeah. So to me, mushrooms are really the tip of this natural sphere of medicine. And we all know we're starting to move into that direction. And I think fungi is really, you know, the big um, iceberg that we're trying to tap yeah. into to find more of these resources. Well, and what's very interesting, what you're saying is that when you look at how the current uh, medical system is looking at a body, it's like we're a car and we're body parts. And the way you're framing it is very different is, oh, can we use the same substance to actually benefit? And I was speaking with someone last week, she was mentioning, well, that's great to do mushroom journey for, you know, uh, solving maybe past trauma, but it also helps your gut biodome at the same time. And that's exactly what you're saying. It's uh, let's not just look at it for the mental health. At the same time, it can help with inflammation. It's something that, well, we're all suffering with uh, what unfortunately we're eating and breathing all day. So I, I really like that approach of natural and holistic. So do you see um, more, I would say, in the medical sphere, do you see more people inclined in looking at this type of approach, holistic and natural versus what we've always been, which was chemical and one little piece at a time? Uh, or, or do you feel very isolated right now with that approach? Well, I think one of the beauties of having chosen a really good partner with the Ohio State University is that they are, as a team and the faculty that are coming forward to have these conversations, they are very much interested in how are all of these colleges, how are these different parts of ourselves being able to play together? I mean, the last time I was in Ohio State, I met with aerospace engineers to food scientists to neuroscientists. They're all interested in how can mushrooms help the world, their certain sector, mushrooms in space to, you know, dendrite growth. There is so much here. So they're all excited at looking at this from a holistic perspective. Mm -hmm. One, holistically as the mushroom and the entourage effect, and then holistically yeah. as how do all these parts fit together? Yeah, oh, that's that's fabulous. So talking about um, the good side, let's look maybe at the challenges. So, yeah. so what are really the main challenges you see in developing, you know, psychedelic based therapy, especially again in the context of women's health and always inner state, you know, overcoming them? 
Yeah, I would say the first one is obviously dealing with anything that's a Schedule One drug. We know that's <laughs> bureaucracy, and we have it takes a much longer time frame. And you're looking at protocol. I mean, one of the things we struggled with is the actual protocol of where we grow the mushrooms. And it's become so truncated that trying to grow multiple different strains in this very isolated box in plant pathology in the back room has become a real kind of push-pull conversation. I mean, the beauty, again, like I said, we actually have great partners and the DEA is actually interested in this expansion. So, yeah. but it takes time. So, yeah. you know, you really have to be patient around the process and then you have to be utilizing the community around you to say, okay, we want to pull in people from, you know, politics, from the College of Pharmacy, College of Medicine. You know, you really have to go in and, communicate to everybody on these platforms how important this is. So it just, it's a um, lots of conversing and a lot of communication yeah. and a lot of time. And yeah. when it comes to women's health, you know, we're obviously on this precipice where obviously we saw the Gates Foundation and what Melinda Gates is promising for women's health is like really a first cracking open of, okay, there's funding that's going to start going towards this. Obviously there's many other people, but a big name like that does a lot yeah start directing people's understanding. Um, I would say the problem is still men who fund companies yeah. are still reticent to fund a female focused health organization. I had some of my investors who, again, have now changed their minds understanding. I said, women's health is mental health. It's family health. I mean, if you don't yeah. have foundation of a woman feeling good mentally and physically, how does the rest of the family function? Yeah. I mean, you know, women are 80% of kind of how the, the family function uh, unfolds. So for me, getting them to understand the importance of looking at female health and how it's not going to detract from male health. I mean, mm -hmm. some, of the, some of the focuses we're looking at, like, look, women's health may be looking at menopause and estrogen, but that will lead to looking at things like dementia and Alzheimer's because those exactly. tend to be more of an issue for women, but they still affect men. Yeah. So it really is broader than just women's health, but you know, that focus obviously needs to be there. Cause again, if I don't champion this, then I'm not sitting and I'm not able to stand up for the things that I believe in. So it's a little bit harder, but again, I think with all of these things, it becomes about communication and community. Again, thank you for having me yeah. on this this helps to promote and connect more community. And um, Suzanne also exactly. bringing that together. She's incredible. So I'm I'm just so fortunate to have really incredible advisors and a team around me as well to help champion this project. Yeah, well, and you know, like you, you said a, a few key things, time and, you know, for a startup, time, wow, you know, it, you don't have that much time because you have a certain amount of funding and then you, you, you know, you need to survive. So it's always the challenge with this highly regulated environment. It's also the balance of, you don't have the luxury of time either. So who are you managing? Are you raising money right now? Or are you in the middle of a raise or something like that? To f yeah. Yes, yes, we did it. We did a first raise. And now because we've just expanded our contract with Ohio State University, we've added on a little more um, project money for research. So now we're funding kind of a bridge raise at this point. So obviously, if people are interested, I'm more than happy to connect with them if they are interested in participating or learning more. I'm always, you know, open to good investors who understand the process to this. We have a really amazing investor community at large um, and the people who have supported me along the way, including people in Ohio. So it's been mm -hmm. a... Um, really enjoyable process because it's again expanded out the connections and the people who really believe in this that to me is the most exciting part of fundraising is seeing yeah. how many people actually believe in making this shift from hearts and minds to really being able to provide it as therapeutics and you know get access to it for everybody out there who isn't just able to access the gray market but we can exactly. get it to people who are let's say in you know other states that don't have access to it so to me that's really exciting yeah and and you know you you mentioned women's health you know as a market it's a massive market so it has by definition been underserved because for the longest time we thought that health was actually men health so the studies were basically made on 
you know, subjects that were male as if we have the same, yeah, okay, we, we all have two legs, two arms, kind of, you know, but at the same time, the hormonal aspect of it is extremely different. So, and that Suzanne actually who, uh, was explaining me how little research we we have in order to just be able to do the basic studies because we don't even have the um, kind of benchmark for women. So I guess you're also you also have to build so much in order to be able to do your uh, to do your work. Yeah, you nailed that. The building of the library around mm -hmm. it is part of that time and the research phase. So that's really what we've started to understand is look, we need to get in here and lay the foundation for some of these things yeah. and look at very basic elements of how does this interact with the estrogen receptors? Yeah. How does okay brain interact with it? And then what does that mean? And then how do you utilize that for other therapeutics and how it interacts with other drugs? So there is, there's, there's a lot of foundational research that needs to be had, but the beauty is also it's close enough to creating product too, that the hope is there really is two pathways here. There's the nutraceutical path that if we can find novel molecules that aren't touching psilocybin per se, if we're yeah. not having to use psilocybin as part of the entourage effect, to create the actual effects. There's something there that we can start utilizing. You spoke about gut biome. That's one of them. Yeah. We can easily start moving into that. And then the pharmaceutical pathway, but there's a lot of value tranches along the way that are yeah. building out information pieces for other companies to also exactly. do broader work on this. So um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a lot. It's a, it's definitely one of those things as an entrepreneur, you think you're starting here, but really you're starting yeah. way further down. <laughs> so exactly. Exactly. It's always looking up at the next mountain to climb. Yeah, well, and the beauty is that hopefully you can also monetize any, yes. you know, yeah. any studies you're you're making Absolutely. because everyone needs this this finding. So it's probably also different uh, revenue generating avenue that you might not have thought about when you started the company. So uh, I'm Absolutely. saying that for potential investors, yeah, there is more yeah. than mid VI, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, so what would you be your uh, top three pieces of advice for someone who is interested in the biotech field and especially in the space of psychedelic drug discovery? Well, I think anytime you're venturing, if we're looking at it as being an entrepreneur and you're venturing into this space to start something, vision is critical and holding on to that vision. It doesn't mean the vision can't change. It just means you have to be the visionary. I've been told a lot in the academic space, like they're really about knowledge creation. So having a vision about how that translates into a product, that's your role. So being able to understand how, what's the market? Yeah. understanding the unmet need. Are there people out there who want this? And then how do you take it from what's on the lab into the marketplace? So having yeah. that vision of being able to follow that through and get others to believe in it, that's first and foremost. And um, really being able to hold that in the darkest of nights too, yeah. that's that's really yeah. the skill set in this. And you know, thankfully I have good advisors around to help me through that process. Um, I, like I said before, timing and patience through this process as an entrepreneur and somebody who's been in products before, you know, a year's time to put out a product was kind of a normal process. Now, looking at research behind it, you've got a much longer lead time. Yeah. So being patient for that and, and understanding the rigors of science and what it takes to get there. So I think that patience process is really important. And then I've mentioned it as well as a really good team. I yeah. am, you know, mm -hmm. I am a Renaissance person. I'm not a, a scientist by uh -huh. trade, so I know some things, and you know, most of them. So many more people know better than I. And learning to hire the right people, or connect, or find the right advisors. I mean, we met through one of my amazing advisors, and my whole advisory group is just incredible. They want to help. They want to see this through, and so having those people who see the vision with you becomes paramount because if they don't see it and then you falter, you know, then, then nobody's there to save you at that point too. Cause yeah. at times you're going to have to have those people around you pushing you forward. So yeah. I've been very fortunate in the people who've come on board to help see this vision come to life. And oh, do you see, I'm always interested, especially in the world of psychedelic that many of people who, Paul, in that uh, space, it's because 
there is a personal story. So for me, there was definitely a personal story. And very often when I speak with people, it's because, oh, their mother, their father, their grandma, you know, there was uh, stories like that. Do you see on your hand um, people who also come through personal stories? Or do you also see, which I think is important, people who see, you know, the opportunity for the market, but also the opportunity in terms of discovery? Is it a mix of everything or is it really coming from me, myself and I type of story? <laughs> I, I, the beauty is it's kind of a combination of all of this. I've got a lot of doctors who have joined the advisory who want to see a shift in how medicine's prescribed. So that uh-huh. is, it's personal to them. Great. They're frustrated by what they're able to prescribe, the things they're able to do for their patients. So that's one factor of it. And that's a big one. That's kind of because I'm more scientifically inclined. The advisors who come on board are more people who are like, how do we get this to a broader group of people and to my um, clients? So that's one group. And then definitely um, some of the advisors who have had their personal interactions with that and how I would say more almost on the microdosing side than maybe mm-hmm. even on the macro side of how it's helped them foundationally feel better on, you know, different female issues that they've had from mm-hmm. perimenopause menopause to, um, like I said, the loss of children and yeah. a whole host of other female issues that it kind of became clear there needs to be more around this. What's happening? What are the dynamics around it? And then people who may not even reside in any of this, but they look at it and they go, there need there is an unmet need in the mental health yeah. space and therapeutics that go, something needs to change. This looks like one of those opportunities. We want to see this happen. So yeah, it's a it's a really interesting dynamic group of people. Yeah. Some people have never even done it before who just like, we want to help you make this legal because we see and read what's out there in the news. And, you know, I think that's the beauty of all the people who've come before me who are pushing this forward, who are changing hearts and minds yeah. around it. Like, thank you for all those people who have climbed those mountains and pushed it forward to start changing yeah. people's ideas around psychedelics and what it can do. Oh, that's great because it also means that we have different networks, we have different uh, value add we can bring to the table because very often it's challenging when your advisor is 10 different people, but they're kind of clones. So that's right. good to, uh, right. to have that variety. So uh, one like, last question for you is, um, can you share more about inner states, you know, future goals, but also for people who are listening, uh, who can they connect with you, with your work, where, where can they find you and all that great things? Yes, easy to find me. Our website is interstate.me and we're on Instagram as well. Our Instagram's linked on the website page and there's a contact sheet to connect with me as well. So that's an easy way to connect. And ultimately our goal for interstate is to really see this through to getting access point. I mean, my my hope would to see a rescheduling, being able to get through an FDA process. I don't really view that as our process per se, but that's sort of like the ultimate big yeah. goal. Can we get there. In the interim, my vision really is how do we keep expanding within the university at Ohio State University? We've got this incredible partner. We've got some concepts around what that looks like in terms of expanding a a potential grow house. How do we start getting this access for more clinical trials so that people from Arizona to New York have access to whole mushroom mass? So really being able to create a network for other people to have access to all of this library and what all these different strains can do for people. So being able to have a little more understanding foundationally around what each strain and genus therapeutically can do. And then you can start creating all different types of products from that. Okay. Oh, that's, that's fabulous. And uh, so you mentioned where people can find you. Potential investors can reach out to you in the same way if they're interested in uh, in participating in the future, which I think is the such an exciting adventure you're on, and you know such a huge market. And to your point, it's a 
financial returns, you know, like I'm a former VC. So obviously that's always what I look first, uh, but at the same time with a purpose and, you, you yes. know, nothing better, nothing better than that. Do you have any uh, parting thoughts for mm -hmm. anything you would like to share with, uh, with the audience? Well, I first want to thank you, you know, as um, a entrepreneur and visionary, we have a tendency to go towards the vision in terms of in the investor modality, understanding revenue is also right around the corner and, and looking at products. I think being able to bridge those two things together to understand investing in this space isn't just investing yeah. into research, it's investing into the future of the products we have mm -hmm. access to. So I thank you for that reminder to the people listening that There is a bridge to that and uh, there will be products soon. And that's really our goal around this. And I think ultimately, you know, for me, it's such an exciting space because I meet people like yourself and the community of those who are trying to change the future of mental health, of pharmaceuticals. It's just a, you know, a very, I sort of say it's like you're looking at the beginning of a huge new generation mm -hmm. of people focused on how do we change this platform? How do we change yeah. their to people? And I'm just so grateful to be a part of it and grateful yeah. for all the people who are doing it currently who've done it before me. So really just a, um, a thank you to all those and thank you to you for having me on. No, thank you so much for, for coming because, you know, you really brought a lot, a lot of insights in such a short period of time on many, many things that people might not have connected the dot with, you know. So thank you so, so much, Ashley, for coming. And uh, anyone interested, you can find more information on Inner State at innerstate.me, the website on Instagram. And again, as Ashley mentioned, you can reach out directly to her if uh, if you want to know more about her or the company. So thank you so, so much, Ashley, and uh, talk to you very soon. Great. Thank you, Peggy. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.